Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how to use some of Tim Holtz's new Distress Oxide inks in this layout and how I incorporated them in my art. So let's get started. So to start with, I am going to put some washi tape along the top of my page. Some people might not care that you end up getting marks in your coils of your notebook, but I do. So in this case, I'm just basically taking a little bit of washi tape and running this along here. I've used masking tape in the past. I find sometimes it grips too much and sometimes ruins the paper that is being covered, but depending on the tack of your masking tape, it may not matter. I'm going to start with using some Distress Oxide Speckled Egg. This is a new color that came out a while ago. So to start with, I'm going to add a little bit of the Speckled Egg Distress Oxide ink to my layout. It doesn't have to be a really thick layer. One thing I learned from one of Tim Holt's more recent videos is the intent with a lot of these inks is that they're supposed to be going on about a tenth of the saturation that you see on the label. And the idea is that you can build color, you can layer color, and this allows you to be able to have variation. It's same with paint. With paint, to get the true color of paint, you need to layer quite a few layers. And it's the same with inks. So in this case, I'm just gonna put a really light layer across my entire page. One thing I've realized is I, I really do struggle with <laughs> with leaving anything white. It, it seems to bug me and it's something that I am trying to work into my layouts to add more white in. But in the meantime, I am using the speckled egg because it does go on super light. So I can add a little bit of color. So I feel like there's enough color in my project, but at the same time that I don't have to go crazy adding too much to it. So I'm working in a Bristol board journal and I really like how the Bristol board and this ink interact to each other. I really like the speckled egg color that came out that came out earlier this year. I think it was during the summer. What was what's nice about it is it is so well blendable with the other colors in the Tim, the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide line. What I also like about it, it is so soft but it has such a nice color to it that just blends so well with a lot of the things that I'm working on so it's actually become one of my go-to inks which I was a little bit surprised by. I thought I would give it a try and, and see because I do have a lot of Tim Holtz colors so it's kind of like well do I really need another color and actually I'm really glad I, I got this one. I got this one and actually his new Crackling Campfire as well. I find that they do add something. Every color seems to be very well thought out so every color seems to add something to my art. So once you actually have a bit of this down, it doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is, I wanted the idea of an ocean background. So we just want a really simple layer of ink, and now we're going to add our stamps. This one's new to me, I only recently got it, and it's basically the Sea Life stamp set, and I love, I love the lobster, and the crab, and the fish, and, and the seahorse, and the ones I'm using today are, are this fish, uh, this leafy bit, and the octopus. And so I'm going to start by actually doing the leafy bits because everything else is going to work around how the leafy bits fall. And what I like about the stamp set, it isn't, you could look at this as being coral, but for me, I see it more as a freshwater aquarium plant. So you basically take your Ranger Archival Jet Black ink and add some ink to your stamp. Because what I, what I love is I actually have a planted aquarium. I actually redesigned it a couple weeks ago and uh, put all new plants in. So I pulled out a couple hundred shrimp, a bunch of my fish, and I basically redesigned the whole thing so they have a new home. And so I love the idea of mixing some of the plants in with the fish. I think it also grounds the picture. Instead of being just fish, I, I like the idea that they are in their home. And maybe it's because I do spend a lot of time working on my aquarium that the idea that these fish have a home <laughs> is kind of important to me because it's it's showing nature in its it's showing nature in the way I really feel like it's intended. Like common people often make about my aquarium, they're like, "Well, your fish seem really happy, and it seems like a natural environment." And my comments always, "Yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to be." I I think the idea of having animals that have a place anywhere they're at is a great thing. 
And so basically at this point, what I'm running into is I've stamped a few. They look good, but now what I'm running into is I want, I'm going to end up having a tiny bit of overlap. So what I'm going to do is actually, I took a little sticky note and where the sticky part is, I basically pulled out a tiny little section of that. And what that's going to allow me to do, it's going to allow me to mask off the areas I don't want to accidentally over stamp on. And I'm going to try not to have too much of a mess here. But this way, it, it allows you to kind of get your image in there in a way you may not have been able to. So I think that looks fairly natural. And you can see here, I actually have a little bit of an error. So what I'm going to do is actually go in with my, my pens and try to fix that. Or in this case, I just stamped over it, so you can't really tell. <laughs> I'm actually going to do a similar thing up here. So there we go, that's a fair amount of foliage for my little aquarium or ocean scene. And now I'm going to move on to adding my next image. The reason I'm using archival ink for this particular project is I am going to be adding in reinker ink with a paintbrush. So I do want to make sure that this ink is waterproof. And the archival ink is, I believe it's oil based, so it is has a waterproof property so you don't have to worry too much about ruining your art by not realizing what's waterproof and what isn't. And now I'm going to put in my, my group of fish. And I'm actually going to move this up a bit. I learned this last time I was actually working on this layout. I, I had something too close to the coils and then it didn't stand properly so let's not do that this time. In this case, I actually want to stamp over the edge because I do believe that uh, having things go off the page makes it look a little bit more natural. Usually when fish school, they, they, they will often school in the tight group, but they won't necessarily school right next to each other. I actually have quite a few schooling fish in my aquarium just because they, uh, they have some really neat behavior when you actually see them in a big group. Yeah, so I like the idea of adding variety to where my placement is. So you don't want them all lined up. You want to have them looking like they are moving through the water. So the next thing I do is start adding ink to my fish. I usually use watercolor paint when I do this, but in this case, I decided I would use some of my Distress Ink reinkers. I have a lot of them. So I'm going to be using mowed lawn, ice spruce, peacock feathers, peel paint, squeeze lemonade, shabby shutters, and cracked pistachio. And what you'll notice is I actually have a little silicon palette here. These are just palette paper sheets uh, that you can actually you just use them and rip them off. I often use them in my painting classes but in this case I'm going to be using them to put the ink on the surface so I can use some water to dilute it and add to my project. I'm also using three different brushes. I have a triple zero, a zero, and a two that I'm going to be generally using for this work. So I'm going to start with peel paint. And as you can see, by adding just a little bit of water, you end up getting quite a good color. So because the reinkers are quite strong, you can dilute them quite far to get the colors that you want. I'm going to try to zoom in on this, so just bear with me. So I hope you can see that better now. So basically just adding a tiny little bit of paint in all these spots. I generally start with one color that I like using as a base and then I will often add little bits of other color on top of it as I go. And if you already have stamp pads, and I am a strong believer that every time you buy a stamp pad you really should have a reinker. It allows you to use your stamp pad much longer than you would maybe originally. You can also look at it as being the gas for your for your stamp pad. It'd be like having a car that you never fill up and you buy a new car every single time you run out of gas, which would be pretty silly. So it's kind of the same thing with a stamp pad. And for the longest time, I never used to buy reinkers. 
And my husband, uh, being a drafts person, he mentioned, like, oh, yeah, of course you you have re inkers for stamp pads. You kidding? You know how many drawings we stamp? And and how it would be just impossible to do this without re more ink. So I realized pretty quickly that re inkers are really quite an important thing. So these... Uh, these stamps are pretty detailed, which is amazing. Uh, that's what I love about the Tim Holtz stamps, is they're very detailed. But it means that I'm not always perfectly in the lines, and I'm okay with that. That's part of the reason I actually like having a little bit of the blue in the background, because it, it makes it a little bit softer, so then if you do have spots that look a little bit imperfect, or the white is a little less forgiving, or I feel like the blue is a little bit more forgiving. And this isn't about perfect, this is about getting your ideas down. So now that I've added my first little layer of ink, I am now going to go in with a little bit of cracked pistachio. Just add a little bit of a few spots of color. It's not every leaf, it's a little bit here, a little bit there. Just to add a little bit of a variation to your leaf. And uh, yes, I am not going between the lines perfectly. I'm a little impatient. And in the end, this is supposed to be kind of wavy and kind of fun. And I, I don't... I'm not willing to spend an hour painting very, very perfectly and slowly. And I probably should be doing more of that in general. But I don't. And that's okay. And so I'm going to throw in a little bit of mold lawn. And that's basically how I color one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to paint, but I'm going to be fast forwarding this a little bit just because it's pretty much the te same technique for every single branch.
that's the foliage having been done. One thing I noticed is this one I actually stamped a little bit on the just above where I wanted to. So I'm just going to actually just use my Faber Castell pit pen and just thicken that out a little bit so it looks like it's actually coming, it's not hanging out in space, it's actually in its own spot. And the reason I really like these Faber Castell pens is they're pretty much the same kind of intensity of black as the archival ink, jet black ink. So they're really great to work together with. So if you ever have errors in your stamping, you can usually end up drawing in very gently some of the spots that you missed. So the next thing we're going to do is the fish. And these fish I'm not going to make super bright because it's, it's part of the layout for me to make them a little bit more muted. I'm going to use a combination of ice spruce and peacock feathers to get these guys colored in. So I'm going to try to start with a size 2 watercolor brush. What I really like about the ice spruce is it it's a little bit gray green. So it's actually a pretty good choice for this type of work. And then it's going to basically do the tops of their bodies in the gray green. Ice spruce color and then I'm going to come in with a smaller paintbrush to do the rest. Actually, I'm going to move down to zero. These stamps are so detailed. I'm really care I'm really trying to be careful not to go too far outside the lines. And I'm doing nothing with the eye. I kind of want to leave the eye the way it is. So when I started this layout, I was thinking about the idea of how sometimes we need to kind of go kind of against the grain, against the stream, however you want to see it, uh, and maybe do uh, go our own way and have our own path. I was at work the other day. I recently started working part-time at an engineering company again, which was originally never a part of my plan, but it's actually worked out okay. So far, it's it's been okay. And... Uh, it was interesting because I was talking with one of my coworkers, and his comment to me was, "Well, you seem so happy and so, like, in such a good place. Like, like, how can you be so positive?" And I was thinking about it. I'm like, "Well, I think I'm at a point where I, I just stopped caring so much about what everyone else is thinking, and I'm kind of just doing my own thing. And and that's one thing I realized as I, I was working in in oil and gas before is that." I was getting way too caught up in everyone else's stress. I was getting way too caught up in everyone else's opinion or their opinion of my work or any of that. And because I was working in a very political spot, there wasn't really a lot of room for discussion. It was pretty much conform or we will squash you. And so coming from that, I made a choice when I decided that I was willing to at least uh, work back at what I was doing, if, even if it's just temporarily was not to lose myself in it, not to lose who I am. And I've been a little timid coming back into work. I've not, I think just with my previous experience and, and the um, emotional abuse I dealt with at my previous workplace, I've, I've realized that I'm just not willing to put myself out there quite as much as I, I can't even like working on this channel because like this is my passion. This is what I really care about. And I do do good work at the job that I do. I am actually a really great project controller. But one thing I realize is that it can't be everything. And sometimes we just don't always see eye to eye where everyone's caring so much about whether this plant gets built. Like, yeah, I, I want to make sure that things get built and that things are safe. But it's not the only thing that drives me. Uh, this channel, uh, what I'm trying to do uh, with learning how to have my own personal self-care and trying to encourage others towards self-care, that's what's really important to me. Uh, not not necessarily making sure that a plant gets built on time and on schedule. <laughs> and maybe that's terrible to say, but I, I, think, I think you can care, but you can choose how much you care. The idea that, you see, of all these fish, they're all going in the same direction. And they're all kind of the same. And they're all kind of muted in color. 
and then you and then I was going to add the octopus on top where it's going to be on top here looking like crazy because I always think octo octopuses are crazy because with all those legs and everything they look pretty awesome and I was going to do it in a, in a bright red color and the idea was why do we have to hide who we are and one thing I realized that in a sense by being who I am and only caring so much about the work but caring more about the people I'm going to be able to impact my workplace for the better because I am willing to be relational. One thing I've realized from where this project's at and where things are at in the company is that there's a lot of focus on getting it done done and done quickly and it, it's almost like there's a little less focus on the, the the people aspect of it as it is getting the work done aspect and I've really kind of had to fight against that. I, I purposely work a shorter week. I purposely don't work full time. And a lot of that is so that I can continue to do these videos and have this channel. Uh, and part of it is just to make sure that my head's in a good space. We need to decide what's important to us. And sometimes it, our jobs can't be where all our value comes from. It needs to be in something else. And I, I learned that the hard way. I, I hit burnout and it's very easy in the industry I'm working in to do that because it's, we want more, we want more, we want more of your time, we want more of your mental energy and there's usually more politics that comes with that <laughs> and because of it, it can end up being extremely draining, not helpful and can end you, end you up in a place that you didn't really want to be and I think where I am right now is trying to be more purposeful. It's making sure that I have time for art in my week. Like, yes, there is work. Yes, there's lots of life stuff going on. Yes, I am very busy, but slowing down, taking the time to paint and doing it this way is not fast. And that is exactly the point. It's to take that time to slow down and to, to deal with that self-care aspect, even when it feels like there's so many other things and so much other pressure to be focused on other things. We all have a choice and I think it's choosing that, that ability that we do have choice to kind of carve out the life that we want, even in the busy. So you'll see that I've been adding a lot of gray and then kind of mixing in the peacock feathers kind of as I go. Because I did kind of want to accentuate this little fin here and the belly. Because if you actually see fish in aquarium, not at a pet store, because the ones at the pet store are stressed out and they're actually not... Yeah, usually all that colorful but when I look at my own aquarium it's interesting because a, a fish that is green often has some blue and some red and some other colors they're very reflective in a lot of ways especially people think about the the more saltwater fish but I have a freshwater aquarium and so I have realized just how much variety there is in the color and that the more you look at them and the more you see them you realize that the way they reflect the way the fins reflect light, you can get some really interesting colors in your fish. So I didn't want these guys, as much as I'm trying to have them kind of fall to the background as being kind of my representation of kind of going with the flow or I always feel like it's the gray part of life, right? The gray part of life of the things you have to do to kind of get through the day. And are my octopus is going to be kind of like the vibrant part of my life that is the things that bring me happiness and joy. And again, you can mix them in a little bit more depending on how far you want to go. And that's part of the reason I also wanted to start with a little bit of a blue background. Because by starting with a little bit of a blue background, you end up with uh, the fish almost falling a little bit more towards that end of the spectrum. But I did want that to stick out a little bit. So this is where you can really take advantage and use values in your art. So what do we talk about values? What are we talking about? Um, I'm talking very much about color values. With color values, you don't have everything at the same level of intensity. And it's something that, as, an, as a newer artist, that I have really struggled with. It's like everything's the same intensity. Everything's very bright and very bold. And so by trying to add in the lighter background, by having the fish to be a little bit more intense, but not as intense as the octopus is going to be, again, all these things add to that sense of value, so that sense of depth, so that you end up not with a very um, flat piece of work, but it actually becomes quite a bit more dynamic. And when you're 
and you can mix the colors in a little bit when they're already kind of wet on wet because the 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 um, ice spruce hasn't completely dried you can end also end up with some really great uh, variations in color we're almost out of ice spruce so we're gonna add a little bit more in there again a little bit of reinker can go a long way like I basically put out one drop at a time and I usually don't get through an entire drop I know on um, one of the Tim Holtz creative chemistry classes that he he has I we, they talked about reinkers and about how you could do reinkers in a palette itself and that you, all you need to do is add a little bit of water to re-wet them and I think it's a great idea I don't generally do that just because I have so many palettes of so much of so much paint between my watercolors gouache and everything else I haven't done this with the reinkers and that's why I use a silicone mat because the silicone mat's actually been sitting since last week when I first did my my first demo for this and a lot of it either didn't dry or was a I was able to really easily rewet it so that's the nice thing about these reinkers is if you want to put a little bit into a palette that ink can dry out and then all you have to do is add a little bit of water it rewets and then off you go and you have you have more ink and more more paint that you can work with I'm just gonna mix a little bit of the ice spruce into the turquoise just so it's a little more muted and again if the color is too intense just add a little bit of water it adds a that little bit of muted feel to it I just realized I got a couple of drips across my my page. I'm not going to touch them. I'll just leave them. I'll let them dry. But this is, I probably should have had my water on this side instead of this side because I've now ended up pulling drips across it, which is not ideal, but it's okay. It's okay. It's a, it's an ocean scene. This isn't meant to be perfect. This is a, about more about self-expression than anything else. Yeah, so I, I think I was just thinking a lot about the idea of being seen in my in in my world, you know, and that sometimes is they have the comment from that one lead about like, well, you're so different, you're so happy, and like we need more of that. And I had a moment of like, yeah, you know, just because I'm in a professional environment or whatever, that doesn't mean that I I can't show care, I can't show love and and concern for others, and that maybe that's really what they need. It isn't that the work isn't still there or things aren't still hard, but it's realizing that maybe being that that light to people's lives can make a big difference for them on how they view their everyday. So the next thing I need to do is add my octopus image to a piece of paper. I'm actually using 90 pound uh, cardstock that I got at Staples. It seems to work quite well. Uh, I like using really good quality paper but the 90 pound Staples paper is pretty good and it's nice when you're just stamping and cutting things out because I don't have to worry too much about using really expensive paper and feeling like I'm wasting it. So now that I've set this octopus, I'm going to start adding some colors. So I'm going to start with Crackling Cap Campfire Distress Oxide Reinker. I'm also going to use a little bit of fired brick. So before you actually put these reinkers down, you want to make sure that you do shake them really well before you put the ink down on your palette. So that's the Crackling Campfire, which is the new color by Tim Holtz, and then Fired Brick, which is one of my, my favorite ones that I kind of go back to. And using... Uh, again, a watercolor brush. I'm just going to brush in color on these on these images. So I, I love this image of the octopus. I think it's it's such a fun image. One thing you'll notice using non Bristol paper is that it's going to probably buckle a little bit more, and it's not going to be quite as nice as it was on the bristle board. And if you get slightly outside the lines, it's not really a big deal because uh, I'm going to be fussy cutting out this image. And what I like about this crackling campfire is as I'm applying it, you can see you can get some really neat range of, of color with, within the image. You have the deeper straight red, but then you have these really neat yellow undertones which I don't even know how they managed to do this in the when they were creating it because it actually has a lot of variety in the, in the color even though it is technically more of a red color and that's a nice thing about when you're fussy cutting out images especially if you're not leaving a border around them is you don't really have to worry too much about getting this perfect because again you're going to be cutting it out so if you want to be able to paint quickly it's a great way of being able to to kind of just 
go and do what you need to do. So to try to make this a bit quicker, I'm just going to put down the color for fairly quickly. This guy reminds me of one that I saw when I was on Vancouver Island last year on vacation. I was in a place called Euclid and they actually had this aquarium. And this aquarium, what they what they do is they they basically pipe in seawater and catch a bunch of things straight from the ocean. And then over the summer they, they, they care for their animals and for their fish and basically in the fall they drop them right back in and off they go and they basically end up containing their lives in the ocean and what's neat about it is it's an opportunity to kind of see a lot of these local uh, aquatic animals in in a place you wouldn't really see them unless you're really scuba diving and I just found it fascinating and what was neat was they had this this um big octo like this octopus that I guess had tripled in size in the last couple months since they since they had it there and it was amazing watching him move because he went from being it was amazing because I didn't realize how much they change color as they move and they and they hide and they blend into their background so you'd see even as he moved throughout the tank how his color would change and so I guess you could say technically I'm not making this totally realistic because <laughs> if he was red in color, he wouldn't be showing himself red uh, if everything else around him was blue. He would look pretty blue, actually. But I, I have to say that I I was really impressed by, by seeing this octopus. I've seen octopuses in aquariums before, but I don't think I've ever seen one quite that active and one that was changing color quite that much. And so for me, it was a real highlight of... Of that trip to that aquarium because I love that the octopuses are actually really smart they're tool users they they really are quite an amazing creature and so I really thought the idea of you have all these fish swimming along and then you have this this octopus that's like all little tentacles and he stands out right he stands out because he is so different than the others and I think that's something that I want to try to do more in my life is to stand out not not looking for tension. That's not what the intent is. It's more like maybe being different than the people around you. Like working with a bunch of engineers, I'm not a typical, being a project controller, uh, I don't have the same attitude as a lot of the engineers. And that's okay because honestly, I, I've i really embraced the idea of being different from those around you, especially in your work and in your life. By being different, you bring different things to the table. You... I, look at the world in a different way and I really do believe that we need to embrace diversity more. I think for me it was when I was working at a golf course. I did, when I took a couple of years off of oil and gas I I was actually working at a golf course for a summer and what was so interesting about dealing with one with girls who were basically old enough to be my kids <laughs> Uh, was it was amazing because I one I had a realization of how old I've gotten and two was the realization that like they were so different and they had such a different attitude towards things and it was a beautiful thing so now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the fired brick and with the reinker that with the fired brick reinker you'll notice that it has a little bit more opaqueness to it so I do have to be kind of careful when I'm adding things not to completely cover up the image below. And I'm just adding it to places where there's already a little bit of a shadow. Just to try to add a little bit more interest. But yeah, what was interesting about working with people who were young and so much different than me was the fact that they, I felt like they had a lot to offer me. Like, I, I, learned, I learned a lot from those girls. Um, we had, we were so different. But I, I think the beauty is, is having worked in engineering for so long, you end up running into mostly a similar personality. Like, very focus driven task oriented and and that's not a bad thing but I, I ran into sometimes ugh, we get caught up in things and I think what I realized is is the beauty of diversity the beauty that we all have different things to offer the world and people may not understand where you're coming from but that doesn't mean you don't have something to offer I also look at work a lot differently now so a lot of it is the whole, everyone's a tool, I am the hammer, every, every problem is a nail. And unfortunately, when you go to the world with that attitude, 
can leave you pretty frustrated. And I spent a lot of time with that mentality and being very frustrated. And I think it's one of those things of if you can embrace differences or realize that not everyone sees the world the way you do. And yes, sometimes it requires a lot of patience because it can be like, would you just stop doing that? But at the same time, I think it's understanding that everyone has something to offer. We all have different skills. And working on a golf course, it was a wonderful thing. Uh, you'd have the girls who loved who loved doing really physical, really hard work. And then there's people like me who are more than happy to sit there and deal with all the details. And it was about making sure I got every little weed and making sure that everything kind of looked perfect and both places and both types of personalities worked really well in that type of environment. Okay, so there you go. So you can see now that I have finished him, you have some of these lighter spots and some of these darker spots. And by adding two colors and by working with the shading that's already on the stamp, you can end up with a really interesting image. So after painting my octopus, I actually fussy cut it out. I actually needed to use, I, I used just a pair of detailed scissors. These ones are EK Success scissors. They've been really good for doing fussy cutting because of the smallness of the blade. And as well, I ended up using a craft knife craft knife and a cutting mat to get these little spots in here because those ones are really hard to get with a pair of scissors. So then my intention is to actually just lay him across here. So this is where the idea of values comes in where you end up having the very light background, you have the fish that are a little bit brighter but then he is the brightest thing on the page. And I actually have this little quote if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it's because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away, by Henry David Thoreau. Uh, what I like about that quote is the idea that we can all be our own people and that, you know, maybe you don't agree with what's going on around you. Maybe you don't agree with what you're seeing from other people, but that's okay. It might just be that you're just in a different place than they are. And maybe there's a chance for you to be able to show your own flavor and who you are. And maybe it's one of those things where you need to find different people to spend time with. So with this one, I'm actually going to use a mixture of some Zotz glue dots to attach the octopus to the to the journaling page. I'm going to start with a couple large ones and I'm going to add a couple small ones. Then I'm going to actually use a little bit of glue just to get those those tiny little tentacles down because I do want it to be on the paper as much as possible. Yeah, and so these dots are just basically large glue dots that have a very strong adhesion. These ones I haven't used in a while, so they are, they are pretty sticky, but that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm using some of this uh, PPA matte adhesive and I'm going to add a little bit to the edges. I'm actually gonna put a tiny bit on my mat. This is actually the easier way of going about it. Add a little bit to your mat and just brush the edges with it. A little bit of this stuff does go a long way, but because you are actually using the Distress Oxide ink, just be very careful not to get too much on the front of your image, otherwise it's going to run. So I think I'm going to put him right there. Because I want to leave a little bit of open space on this layout. I don't want it all to be completely covered in images. And before I did that, I should have actually put this down first. One thing I realized with vellum this week, when I was actually doing my first run of this project, is that vellum and glue do not work well together. It ended up being so wrinkly that actually my in my layout, I ended up having to put a second layer of this over top. I'm actually just using just a glue glider pro to put some adhesive on the back of this. I have learned a few things about vellum this week. One, it is a hard one to tape down. Glue Dots actually has a vellum vellum sheet adhesive that you can make that work for you. In this case, I'm just gonna put as much as I can along the back so it looks not too strange that it's there. I actually had two different types of vellum. I had a very light vellum and I had this heavier vellum. And I had to move the heavier vellum so you don't see the tape too much through it. But actually getting a proper uh, adhesive for this is probably the better way to go. But since I don't have it, I'm gonna work with what I got. But yeah, I learned the hard way that, that glue and vellum do not work together. It was a mess. Yeah, it was so wrinkly and it was so bad. And uh, I was not really happy with my final 
the the final product. So yeah, I've I've learned the hard way. And that's the thing is you gotta try stuff and see what works. So in this case, a lot of my my little tentacles are not completely down. So I'm gonna add a little bit more glue, and I'm just going to try to add them. Cause uh, my last layout as well, I ended up getting up smearing a bunch of the orange ink on the on top of the blue and I was not happy with it. So I'm trying to be really careful that when I am using this glue that is not really touching the orange or I'm being very careful that my hands are fairly clean when I put this down. And I like when things overlap. So I'm actually trying to overlap that tentacle just a tiny bit with the same. Yeah, and so I think when I was thinking about about what I wanted to express in this page. So I think the key was thinking about being unique, being yourself, um, being okay with maybe being different or that maybe people don't understand you. That's okay. Uh, we all have something to offer the world and maybe it is that you are just who you are and maybe some of it is maybe you're just not hanging around with the right people that maybe you've grown and maybe you've outgrown some of the people that you're spending time with. I've had that happen in my life. And it's not the easiest thing because you don't want things to change. But I think there's something to be said about understanding when you're making progress in your own life. And so I guess my encouragement to you is just find a way you can be yourself in the following week. And find a way where you can shine in your own way. And, and, and be able to maybe impact people positively in their lives. So I'm going to... Finally, finish off by removing the washi tape. And there you go, that's your finished project for the week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could please like it and subscribe to my channel. And maybe provide a comment below about what you've enjoyed about this project or anything you'd like to learn. I'm always looking for ideas about how I can help you find creativity in your own lives. I also have my website, Hop Along Studio, where I have other ideas on creative practices and some of them are the psychology behind creativity. I would love to share it with you. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.